There is a test that was marketed, I think probably back in the 90s, for corrosion. It's called Corrosatex. And it was just a simple chemical reaction where you could put um, a chemical in to this mix and you could get a reading from it and it would tell you yay or nay, chemicals to uh, corrosive or not. The, the really corrosive stuff really isn't hard to tell. It's, you know, you, could, you, you don't have to go very far to figure that out. It's the stuff that's in the middle that's always the, the, the difficult ones to, to get to. But this test was approved and it, and it is used um, uh, routinely for chemicals in commerce so that when you have these big trucks on the road, big tanker trucks, and you see these signs on them that say corrosive, people know they're corrosive. So if there's a spill, they know how to handle it. Um, so we haven't come as far as we'd like to come in the sense of really having good ways of, of testing all of these chemicals. There have been some major advances made um, looking at um, cell-based tests that have various endpoints. So knowing how a chemical works and knowing what the endpoint is um, can give a clue as to whether it's going to be toxic in a human or not. And the Environmental Protection Agency has really come a long way in their development of these automated systems where they can test thousands and thousands of chemicals in hundreds of tests with different endpoints and be able to come out with a reasonable prediction of whether something is going to be toxic or not. That's called ToxCast, the ToxCast program. Mm -hmm. And that's, you could go to their website and find it and it's, it's really quite interesting. All of this geared towards not having to test on animals or it's, it's additional information? I mean, at some point you have to see if that's actually, and you might have to, do you have to try to an animal at some point to see if they're valid or, what does that look like? <laughs> yeah, it's not easy, it's very complicated because even if you said that a cell test system is giving you appropriate data, if you're getting the same results as you'd get in an animal test, that may or may not be correct because you're not testing it in a human, which is what your bottom line is. And so we're moving to using human cell lines and human systems. Um, and the gold standard is the human. I mean, the best way to find out if, if a chemical is toxic in humans is to have human data. And there are instances where that, that's happened in where there are chemical spills that um, we've been able to do the epidemiology on those studies and have been able to show that these chemicals at these doses are toxic for humans. And that's why even now when you look at the, uh, at the list of chemical carcinogens, going back to the cancer thing, there are an, any number of, and I'm not going to know all the numbers for this, but there are all kinds of chemicals that have shown to be, um, been shown to be carcinogenic in animals but only a handful that have been shown to be carcinogenic in humans because you can't do the study in humans unless you have an accidental exposure. So you might say that this is a potential human carcinogen, but you can't say for sure. Um, and well, cancer, again, as we discussed earlier, is a, is a very complicated story. We can get exposed to very small, minute quantities of something at a very early age and not even know we were exposed to it we could develop cancer 20 years down the road and never be able to say it was because I was exposed to X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm.